up, guys? This is Zeb from the Reformed and Reloaded podcast. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about this gun. If you have listened to the podcast at all or been a part of our Facebook group, you know that I'm a big fan of the Beretta PX4 Storm. This is actually my second one. This one's a 9mm. Uh, I previously had one in 40 Smith & Wesson. I moved away from 40 Smith & Wesson because, let's be realistic, it kind of sucks. Uh, anyway, this is my full-size 9mm PX4 Storm. No magazine. Empty. Um, now, this is a great gun. Feels great in my hand. And it uh, has just, it's got a great safety. I love the safety on it. That's actually what sold me on the gun initially anyway. Um, it takes down really fast, really easy. Um, really, just about everything about it is fantastic. The ergonomics, it fits, it, it just feels like an extension of my hand. It feels great to me. Um, now, this is a double action, single action gun, which I think is part of the reason why it's become kind of underrated. Not a lot of folks like the double action, single action anymore. Everything seems to have been moving towards the striker guns like the Smith & Wesson M&Ps, Glocks, um, Sig P320s, stuff like that. So because this is a double action, single action, uh, with the safety off, you can see it's got a real long trigger pull for that first shot. Now after that, you've got short trigger pulls. Uh, it's got a pretty nice, I mean, it's heavy, the, the double action trigger pull is heavy, but it is pretty clean. It actually feels a lot like a nice um, like Smith & Wesson revolver. Uh, in my opinion, on this gun, obviously there's going to be some variations. But what I'm going to show you how to do today is a five minute, five dollar trigger job for this. This is not going to be a drastic difference. This isn't going to be like sending it in to Wilson Combat and having them completely re rework everything. But for five bucks, you're gonna have, it's, it's worth it. Anyway, first thing you're gonna do is, well, first thing you're gonna do is order this guy. This is the D spring or the hammer spring for a, for a Beretta 8000. Now, if you're a little leery about putting parts for gun A into gun B, just know the 8000 was kind of the father of the PX4. Uh, it was made a few years prior, had a metal frame, otherwise very, very similar gun. So this is a very similar, uh, very similar part. So you order that. I got mine on numerich.com, N-U-M-R-I-C-H, numerich. Anyway, it's like two bucks, 250, I think, for a, for one of these springs. I bought three of them just to be on the safe side. Plus, then you pay less for shipping overall. So first thing you're going to do, take off your slide, which again, that's all it takes. It's pretty darn easy. Set that aside. The next thing you will do, um, also, this is so easy. I'm going to show you how to do it with two tools, but I'm going to cheat a little bit because one of them is multi-tool. Anyway, I've got Leatherman Style PS, and I've got a little bitty screwdriver. So what I'm going to do, under here, you can see you've got this plug, and uh, that's where the spring is going to go. So I'm going to take out first this clip that holds in the back strap. So you pull that out and then pop the back strap off. Easiest way to do that that I've found is with a little Phillips head screwdriver or something like that. Again, cheating using my multi-tool. Just pop that off. That's all you got. Now, if you can see this little silver pin, we're gonna pop that out. This is where it gets a little dicey. Be careful here. I wasn't careful the first time I did this and I very nearly lost a very important part. This plug, this circle here that you can see is what holds the spring in place. This is under pressure so when you pop that spring out this is going to want to shoot out across the room and never be seen again. So be careful. Keep your finger on it and the best way I've found to do it is take your little screwdriver and just carefully poke through you can see here, I'm popping that pin out. Poke that through. Be careful, don't lose the pin. Setting that down. Now, the screwdriver's holding it in. I'm gonna put my thumb over that pin, and you can see it wants to pop out. It's under pressure, so be careful. So, take that out. Set it down where you won't lose it. Now, with needle nose pliers, and you're gonna need some pretty small needle nose pliers, you're gonna need to dig, uh, reach in there, and that D spring, I don't know how you can see that, probably not very well. 
is in there. If you cock the hammer back, that pulls the spring out a little bit and makes it a little bit easier to grab. So I'm gonna reach in, grab that spring, and pull it out. Now, it takes a fair bit of force, so be careful. Uh, now, here is the PX4 D spring that I just pulled out, and here is the 8000 D spring. The 8000 is just a little bit longer. You can see I've got the bottoms uh, lined up. So you got like two extra coils on there, and it's just a little bit thinner gauge wire, I think. Uh, I'm just eyeballing it. I haven't taken a caliper to it or anything. Now, if you look in there, you've got a little peg, and that is what this is going to fit over. So you kind of have to fish it down through there a little bit onto that peg. It'll slide down. And uh, for this next part, go ahead, you can kind of just manually push the trigger forward. You're going to put this down through there, put the, uh, put the plug back in. And the easiest way that I've got to put it back in uh, place is take that pin, poke it through, and then just firmly, you got to press that down through until that pin slides across. Get it in there half and half, take your back strap, squeeze that in, put your retainer clip in there, and reassemble it. And that is a $5 five minute trigger job. Now. I'm going to show you what uh, you probably won't be able to tell a drastic difference over the uh, over the internet, but uh, yeah, it actually makes the trigger uh, the double action trigger is I would say at least a couple pounds lighter. It's still long, still kind of heavy, but that's the nature of the beast. Not much you can do about that. So it's a little bit I'd say a little bit smoother, and then your single action is noticeably lighter. Um, it's about the same break. It's still fairly clean, but it's definitely a pound or two lighter. Uh, I don't have the instruments to actually measure the trigger weight or anything like that, unfortunately, but uh, it is noticeably lighter. So I would definitely recommend that you check this out. It's real easy to do. It, Like I said, you saw me do it in just a couple of minutes. Um, I've done it. I swapped it in and out, practiced this a few times before the video, but uh, it really only takes a couple of minutes. Costs two fifty for parts. Uh, to, in my mind, if you've got a BX four, that's a no brainer. Now, keep in mind, this is a full sized PX four. This is not the compact. This is not the subcompact. Those have shorter grips, which may mean that they use a smaller spring. I have not disassembled those before um, down to that point, so I don't know for sure. Uh, if you do have one of those, go ahead and give this a try. Um, can't guarantee it's going to work. So test it out before you carry it or risk your life with it. But, uh, you know, worth a shot for five bucks. Anyway, until next time, guys, this is Zeb from Reformed and Reloaded. Check out the podcast. Join us on Facebook and Twitter, uh, all those good places. And until next time, keep safe.